So the brand new uh, pre-order bundles for Wilds of Eldraine have just been um, announced, released in the store. So we're going to have a look at those and see uh, which ones you might want to buy if you want to spend any money on any of them and have a look at the extra bonuses we get in there as well. So stay tuned for that. Welcome back to the channel. Let's have a look at these pre-order bundles for the Wilds of Eldraine. Before we get into it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already, so you don't miss out on any future videos. So, okay, we have the pre-order bundles for Wilds of Eldraine, and they are basically the same pre-order bundles that we've been getting recently since, like, Brothers War or something. Um, was it Brothers War? No, I think it was after that. I think it was Phyrexia. Anyway, um since we've started getting these three different pre-order bundles rather than the two so we have the first bundle which is getting 50 packs uh with five golden packs included as well one extra mythic card and we get a sleeve as well uh, that's for 50 dollars. that's the pack bundle we have the 25 dollar um pass bundle this gives us two player draft tokens, a sealed token, some play in points, and another card, which I think is that a mythic card? I think it was a mythic one um, for yeah, $25. And then we have the $15 Mastery Pass bundle, which gives us literally just the Mastery Pass and one extra card. There's a mythic and a sleeve again. They all give you sleeves. Oh, and the one in the middle gives you a pet, which are no longer called pets. They're called companions, which is this freaky goose hydra thing. Okay, so we're going to have a look at the value you get from these based on the gems that they're worth. And I'm actually going to have a look at the cards you get as well, because you do get uh, these specific mythic cards when you buy the pre-order bundles. And sometimes those cards are better in one pack than they in one bundle than they are in another bundle so we're going to have a look at how useful those cards are because it's not really a benefit if you end up getting a rare or mythic that you don't actually use so the value of the pre-order pack bundle which is the agatha bundle uh yeah we're getting the 50 packs five golden packs and the card now the 50 packs if you bought 50 packs in the store, you get the five golden packs included. So 50 packs here for $50 is the same as if you went to buy gems. And if you get the $100 bundle of gems, which is 20,000 gems, then you're getting the same rate, which is basically 200 gems per dollar. If you only spent $50, you're only getting 9,200 gems. So you're not getting the same rate. So to buy the 50 pack bundle, it's like getting the best rate you get on buying gems over here, uh, but you only have to spend $50 to do it. So there's a slight benefit on buying the pack bundle compared to actually just paying for gems, but it's only really worth it if you're going to spend that much money on buying packs. I don't think it's necessarily um, worth that much, especially considering it's pretty much the same as just buying um, the the gems in the store. If you ever want to get a pre-order bundle, you might as well just spend $100 in the store and then just spend those gems whenever you want it. So like if you don't want to have 50 packs, then there's not really a point in getting committing to 50 packs um, for, that, for that price. Also, what we're basically getting here is 50 packs and an extra mythic. Now, when you look at actually buying the packs um, for most of the sets, if you buy, let's move up this way, 45 packs, you actually get a rare card as well. I didn't think, I thought before this was just uh, just for the fact that it looked nice showing a card as well, because it doesn't actually say anywhere that you also get this card, but you do. So if you buy 45 packs, you get an extra rare card, this specific one. Uh, there's a specific one chosen for each um, set. So for Aftermath, because it's a smaller set, they do it for 10 packs. So you buy 10 packs, you get a Joel Rail. That's how you say it. Um, as an extra rare card, you get the 10 packs and you get that card as well. Uh, but with the other March of the Machine, 45 packs will get you Omnath as well. Um, if you spend 
If you buy 90, you get two copies of it, which is what it shows over there. It's not very clear. I didn't realize that's what it did before. It doesn't say it anywhere, but that's what happens when you buy packs. So actually, if you bought 20,000 gems for $100 and then spent then bought 45 packs you're going to get a specific rare card anyway i don't know if, which card it's going to be in the eldraine set so it might not be a particularly useful one um you never know but the it basically means the pack bundle is okay if you're going to buy 50 packs if you want to get ahead for that set then it kind of makes sense but in general the value isn't really that much different to just buying the gems directly you get this sleeve as well. If you care about sleeves, you get a sleeve thrown in as well. Okay, so the uh, Hilda Play Bundle, which is the one where we get two player draft tokens, a sealed token, playing points, a card, and the companion, and a sleeve. So some extra cosmetic things. The uh, player draft tokens are 1,500 gold, uh, 1,500 gems each. If you were to pay for a premier draft. And the sealed token is 2,000 gems. So that's 5,000 gems worth of value, plus the one extra card. 5,000 gems for $25 is the same rate. It's about 200 gems per dollar, plus you get the extra card thrown in as well. So um, again, about the same value as getting the pack bundle, but you're actually spending less to get the same rate, which is slightly better. So this is only really good if you're going to be playing draft and sealed games anyway, if you enjoy those um, those formats. I tend to play a lot of Premier Draft, but I don't really like sealed as much. I don't find it quite uh, worth as much. Or maybe I'm just not as good building decks in uh, sealed games, maybe. So I probably wouldn't get that because I'm not too bothered about the, uh, the sealed token. Um, the card's quite nice. I'll go over the cards in a minute. Um, and then you get this sleeve thrown in, this uh, Hilda uh, Ice Queen sleeve. Okay, and then we have the Pass Bundle, which is always my favorite. The Pass Bundle, we're spending $15 to get the Mastery Pass. The Mastery Pass is actually um, 3,400 gems worth of value, but only for $15. So if we wanted to get... 3,400 gems worth of dollar, 3,400 gems worth of value, we actually have to spend more than we would on the Mastery Pass bundle. I guess you can spend those gems anywhere, so it kind of makes sense. They're slightly more versatile, they might be slightly more um, expensive or a slightly higher rate. But if you're, if you're building a collection and if you follow the general good advice uh, to build a collection, you want to have the Mastery Pass, basically every set, as long as you play enough to get the value out of it. So you're going to be spending 3,400 gems on the Mastery Pass anyway. So this is just a cheaper way of getting the same amount of gems. You actually get, so 3,400 gems worth of value from just the $15, which is about 226 gems per dollar compared to 200 for the other ones so you're getting like more than 10 percent about 13 percent extra value on the uh, gems which isn't huge but it is something and you're spending even less and normally when you spend smaller amounts you get a worse rate so you're getting the best rate by a decent amount spending the least amount and you're getting the mastery pass which almost everyone should really be getting as long as you play enough, as long as you care about constructing and building a collection. So the Pass Bundle is, to me, by far the best one. It's the only one that I'll probably be, get, probably be getting because I don't really need to get the other ones. I build enough, enough of a collection with um, the draft games that I do anyway. I don't need to pay for more draft tokens. I don't need to really pay for more packs. I'll probably just end up getting some extra rares or mythics that I don't really use if I get too many packs. So the pass bundle would be my pick for the most valuable thing to get because it's the best rate, the lowest cost, and the one that's most applicable to most people because pretty much everyone needs the mastery pass. Okay, so I'm going to also have a look at the cards you get because you do get in the Agatha pack bundle, you get the Agatha of the Vile Cauldron card. With Hilda, we get Hilda of the Icy Crown. And with Ariette, we get Ariette of the Charmed Apple. So I'm going to have a look at those cards really quickly um, and see which one of those 
seems to be the best to me, or I think would be the most fun to use. Um, so let's have a look at those as well. So having a look at Agatha of the Vile Cauldron, it's a red and green 1-1 one, one, human warlock, legendary. Activated abilities of creatures you control cost X less to activate, where X is Agatha of the Vile Cauldron's power. It can't reduce the mana in the cost of less than one mana. So, um, and you also can do four mana, plus a red and a green. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain trample and haste until end of turn. So that seems like a really cool ability at the end. Um, the activated ability costs X less to activate for all creatures. It's not just other creatures. So the first paragraph there, costing X less, also applies to Agatha's ability, which is pretty cool. So if you get Agatha to be a 4-4, then you can pay just a red and a green to give other creatures plus one, plus one, trample and haste till end of turn. Uh, it's not sorcery speed, so if you do want to boost your creatures when you're defending, you can do that as well. But red and green probably is more of an aggro build anyway. So is this card really any good? Well, it's really, really weak to start with. It's a 1-1. One, one. So you need to be able to boost it up to make the ability more useful, but also so it doesn't die to end the festivities or anything really, really simple. Um, and it basically depends on if there's any other decent red and green um, activated abilities on creatures. Now, there aren't that many that I can think of in standard at the moment that would benefit from this, but obviously we have all the cards from the Eldraine set um, which have the opportunity to have lots of different activated costs. But we have things like uh, with March of the Machine, you have lots of cards that transform. They don't get used too much, but there are things like uh, Pelucronos, which has, is it a six mana, six mana plus a green to, um, or six mana plus a white to transform into the uh, the bigger creature with uh, lifelink and reach. But that's three green to uh, cast. So would it go in a red and green deck? Maybe it would. It depends. There's probably going to be some cards in the Eldraine set that would work better with this. At the moment, it doesn't seem that exciting to me. I'm sure there are other better ways to create big, trampling, hasty threats um, rather than this card. So, I don't know. It's not one that seems that exciting to me, but that's the one that you can get in the pack bundle. And then in the play bundle, we have Hilda of the Icy Crown. So that's a two, um, two mana plus white and a blue human warlock legendary three, four creature. Uh, whenever you tap an untapped creature and opponent controls, you may pay one. When you do, you can choose between making a four, four elemental creature token, putting a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control and scry to and draw a card. Now that seems like a pretty good range of abilities that can fit um, all different circumstances. So depending on what's going on, if you need a, a blocker, if you need counters, if you need to scry and draw something, you have a whole range of things you can do there. You just need a, a way of being able to tap the opponent's creatures for cheap. And there is actually um, a card that goes along with Hilda, which can tap things as well, which I've seen recently. So um, that together works really well but also you have things like uh teferi who slows the sunset can tap creatures and um there's some other there's a ninja network disruptor is that the one that can um tap opponents permanence as well so there are ways you can do this so it feels like that's um you know a relatively decent blocker um it is too big for cut down it's too big for lightning strike uh, it can do all kinds of things. So a nice controly white and blue um, piece of equipment there. Uh, so yeah, it seems like a really good card to include in that kind of deck. Uh, not the type that I tend to play, but it does look pretty useful. So that's for anyone who might want to get the play bundle with the tokens. Um, Hilda is a pretty good card as well. And then we have Ariette of the Charmed Apple. That's... Um, one generic mana plus a white and a black. Again, a legendary human warlock, and this is a 2-4. Each creature that's enchanted by an aura you control 
can't attack you or planeswalkers you control. And at the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life where X is the number of auras you control. So there are lots of auras in the Eldraine set, which are token auras, uh, rolls that go onto different creatures. So that's going to obviously work really well with Ariet. So there's things um, that are obviously going to be in the Eldraine set that will work really well with this. Because most of the auras that we have at the moment in Standard, um, especially in white and black, well, are things like you know Pacify-style cards, Imprison-style cards, um, that will stop a creature from attacking anyway. So saying that a creature that's enchanted by an aura can't attack you or your planeswalkers doesn't make sense if it's a pacify style card that won't let it attack anyway. Um, but the other auras that we have at the moment, which aren't normally auras, are ossification. So normally things like borrowed time or seal from existence or um, leyline binding are just enchantments. They're not auras, uh, which is a subtype of enchantments. But ossification is because it attaches to your um, your own basic lands rather than attaching directly onto, um, rather than exile the opponent's creature directly. So basically, if you have ossifications in your deck, in an Ariette deck, then you're going to be potentially gaining four life every turn um, for having four ossifications out on the battlefield attached to your lands. So that's pretty good. Um, and obviously, yeah, there are other auras that are going to be part of the Eldraine set that are going to work really well with this as well. So again, because of the stats of Ariette, it's too big for cutdown, it's too big for lightning strike, it's slightly hard to get rid of, but you're really good against mono red and that kind of aggro stuff because you can pretty much just uh, sit back with it and gain life every turn, and by that point your opponent will probably give up. Most mono red players give up when you start gaining life. So um, it looks pretty good from that. But also, if you have something like a shield red in a deck like this, obviously it doesn't work with the aura synergy. But if you're gaining life every turn and your opponent is losing life every turn, then all you have to do is sit back and um, wait for them to go to zero. Um, so, so yeah, it seems like a pretty fun one to play with. And that's the one we get in the Mastery Pass bundle, which is really good because that's the one most people are going to be getting. That's the one that I'm most likely to get. And this card, out of the three, looks like the one that I would probably most enjoy playing. So that's basically all we've got to say about the pre-order bundles. Um, just to summarize, if you if you play Constructed, if you want to get ahead with as many cards as possible, as quickly as possible, the pack bundle's probably for you. If you want to play more draft uh, limited games, then the play bundle is gonna be pretty good value for you. And for the majority of players and my best pick would be the Pass Bundle because it's the best rate for gems to dollars that you're ever going to get. And it's something that everyone needs. And you also get this really cool uh, Ariette card, which I think is going to be the most useful out of the three. Although I'm pretty sure you'll see a lot of blue-white control with that Hilda card as well. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know which one you are likely to get or if you're going to get none of them or all three of them. Let me know what you think and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss out on future videos going over value economy stuff like this. So thanks for watching this video to the end and I will see you in the next one.